One of the worst kept secrets on draft night was the fact that the Cowboys wanted to take one of the top two corners with the 10th pick. But Carolina and Denver crushed that plan by taking Horn and Sertain with picks 8 and 9. Denied their first choice, Dallas decided to trade back to 12, picking up an extra third round pick in the process, and selected a linebacker as a consolation prize. And boy, oh boy, are they glad that things worked out that way. But what about the rest of the picks? How'd they fare? It's the Draft X-Ray 2021 Draft Rewind for the Dallas Cowboys. Be sure to hit subscribe so you won't miss out on any of the draft or team videos that we've got coming. Try the Draft X-Ray NFL Draft Tracker on Draft Weekend. It's mobile-friendly, simple, no ads. Turns out, not drafting Horn and Sertain, who, by the way, are both great players, might end up being one of the best things to happen to the boys in recent memory because the consolation prize linebacker, Micah Parsons from Penn State, ended up transforming the Cowboys' defense and set the league on fire in the process. Parsons had a monster rookie year, winning Defensive Rookie of the Year honors, first-team All-Pro, and voted to the Pro Bowl. He had 84 combined tackles, 64 solo tackles, 20 tackles for a loss, 30, freaking 30 quarterback hits, 13 sacks, and oh yeah, three passes defended, and just for good measure, three forced fumbles. Good googly moogly, that's one hell of a rookie year. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, yeah, he was a pretty good pick. The Cowboys got their cornerback in round two by selecting Kelvin Joseph out of Kentucky. Joseph was a difficult prospect to peg pre-draft because of vague character concerns, muttered in draft circles, and the fact that he was a very raw and inexperienced prospect. He transferred from LSU to Kentucky, and he played in just 15 college games. But the flip side is, he has great length and is very athletic, scoring a 9.02 Raws, and he has tons of potential, and coaches love potential. However, a hamstring injury sidelined him for seven weeks, stunting his development. He got in 10 games, most of which was on special teams, started two at the end of the season, and by all accounts, showed enough promise that coaches were still feeling pretty good about him. But unfortunately, on March 18th, 2022, a shooting that involved friends of Joseph led to the death of a man, and the Dallas police questioned Joseph about it a month later. Now, this may end up like the Lyle Collins situation where he did nothing wrong and the police were simply gathering information and it all just goes away. Well, at least as far as Joseph's involvement. Or it could be something worse. At this point, on April 23rd, 2022, things just aren't clear. But if Dallas drafts a cornerback in the first, say, two rounds of the upcoming 2022 draft, that might be an indication of how they think things may play out with Joseph. Calvin Watkins of the Dallas Morning News had a good write-up about the situation a few days ago. I'll put a link to the article in the description. With the first of three third-round picks, the Dallas Cowboys selected Osa Odigizua, defensive tackle out of UCLA. Odigizua started fast. In the first six games, he had 11 tackles and two sacks, and was in over 60% of the team's defensive snaps. He cooled off a little as the season wore on, but it looked more like a rookie wall situation. Keep in mind, he only played seven games in his last year in college because of the COVID-shortened season. Odigizua played in all but one game, recording two sacks and 36 tackles, six for a loss. An article by Todd Brock of the Cowboys Wire from the end of October did a good job of detailing Odigizua's fast start. I'll link to it in the description. With the 84th pick, which was the pick the Cowboys received from Philadelphia in the trade down from 10 to 12, Dallas selected Chauncey Golston, defensive end from Iowa. Golston got in 15 games as a rotational player. He didn't have any starts, and his snaps fluctuated. He was consistent, not flashy, which isn't a bad thing. All in all, he looks like a solid selection and should see his snaps increase in year two. With their third pick in the third round, Dallas selected cornerback Nashawn Wright out of Oregon State. Wright was never expected to come in and start right away on defense, the hope being he could contribute on special teams as he acclimated on defense. Wright was a mainstay on special teams, and he even had a couple of blocked punts. So I'd say that his rookie year went pretty much as planned. Now, could you argue that a third round pick should give you a little bit more? Yeah, I guess so. But all in all, he looks like he still has the potential that they drafted him for. And some players just take a little more time. Um, not everyone comes in like Parsons and sets the league on fire in their rookie year. It takes a year, maybe two for some players. So let's just put right into that category of let's see how he does next year. I thought Jabril Cox was a steal in the fourth round. The LSU linebacker is all kinds of athletic, rocking a relative athletic score of 9.73 and a great resume out of Baton Rouge. Unfortunately, a torn ACL cut his season short, appearing in only seven games, mostly on special teams. So we'll have to wait until his sophomore year before we have a firm idea of his impact. The Cowboys had another pick in the fourth round, which they used on Josh Ball, offensive tackle at a Marshall. Ball is super talented and was only available this late in the draft because of character concerns. Ball started his college career at Florida State, but transferred after a scary incident involving his girlfriend. His talent, however, isn't in question, but unfortunately, an ankle injury kept him off the field in 2021. We'll have to wait to 2022 to see if this pick pays off for the Cowboys. In the fifth round, Dallas went with one of my favorite sleeper picks, Simi Fihoko, wide receiver from Stanford. I loved his blend of size, speed, and agility. Like the old saying goes, you can't coach size or speed. And with the relative athletic score of 9.17, he has all the necessary physical gifts. The question is whether or not he can translate that to success at the NFL level. His rookie year, however, didn't give us enough data to make any kind of conclusions. He only played in five games with no starts. And in those five games, he logged seven snaps on offense and 48 snaps on special teams. So hopefully we'll get to see more of Fihoko in 2022.
The Cowboys had two picks in the sixth round. With the first, they selected Quentin Bohana, defensive tackle from Kentucky. Bohana is a stereotypical space-eating nose tackle. At 6'4", 327 pounds, he's an anchor who can maintain his spot. His stats aren't exciting, but they rarely are for nose tackles. His job is to eat up blocks and let the linebackers run. He had one start in the 14 games that he played and flashed enough to indicate he may be a six-round, maybe gem is a strong word, but a very solid player. With their second pick in the sixth round, the Cowboys selected Israel Makamu, safety from South Carolina. I guess really we should say defensive back more than safety, even though he's listed as a safety on the Cowboys roster. He actually played cornerback at South Carolina, so he's very versatile. With a sixth round pick, you're usually drafting for special teams and future depth, and Mukamu's rookie year played out that way. He had zero starts in the four games he played and had 20 snaps on defense and 58 snaps on special teams. This pick is an investment in the future, so we'll have to revisit it next year to get a better idea whether or not that investment will pay off. The Dallas Cowboys finally reached the end of their bounty of picks with their 11th selection of the 2021 NFL Draft. They selected Matt Farniak, guard out of Nebraska, with pick 238 in the seventh round. Now, Farniak uh, is versatile, played tackle and guard, and his rookie year, he played in 12 games with zero starts, and the majority of his snaps came on special teams, but the hope is that he can nab one of the starting offensive line spots next year, maybe either guard or center. If you can find a starter, even an average one, in the seventh round, then you're doing something right. It's fun to add up the AVD for every player in each team's draft to get a total and then rank all the teams based on that. The Cowboys were near the top with 32, but that's in large part due to Parsons. But even so, that ranks second in the NFL and first in the division, and Philly's coming up close behind, but Washington and New York are near the bottom. If you then take that number and get a per pick average, the Cowboys had an average of 2.91 AVD per pick, which was 10th in the NFL and second in the division, with the Eagles coming in at nine. It's probably much ado about nothing, but it's fun to look at. Normally, I end things by comparing a team's draft to the old adage, if you walk away from the draft with three good players, then it was a success. Defining the meaning of good is subjective, but I think most would agree that at least two of the three should end up as starters and the other a valuable rotation player at a minimum. With 11 picks in 2021, I think the odds are very, very good that they will indeed get more than three good players out of this class. But honestly, even if they don't, you still have to consider this draft a roaring success. When you draft a monster in the first round, or hell, any round, someone who, if he can remain healthy, has a legit shot at a gold jacket. Well, hell, how can that be anything other than a top-of-the-class successful draft? How about them, Cowboys? You can find more information on the Draft X-Ray website, including a list of the media that covers each team on every team page, from the beat writers to the podcasters and YouTubers. If you don't see someone that should be on there, contact me and I'll look into adding them. I'll wrap things up by shouting out some YouTube channels that any Dallas fans should check out. A to Z Sports Dallas, The Dallas Cowboys Show, Mike Fisher's The Fish Report, DMV Fanatic, Cowboys Nation TV, Cowboys Fan Talk, Cowboys Block, Jeff Cavanaugh, Mark Holmes, Space Cowboys 17, Boss Cowboys Sports. If you find yourself looking for a draft tracker on Draft Weekend that isn't bogged down with autoplay videos and mountains of ads and ad tracking JavaScript, check out the Draft X-Ray Tracker. No ads, no videos, no fancy things to slow things down. Just a simple tracker and big board that makes the picks and trades easy to follow. Thanks for watching, and be sure to hit subscribe and like. We'll be back soon with the next team in the Draft Review Series.